Hi everyone! Today we'll be doing a high yield step one review focusing on parasites. Let's get started! So the first patient's going to come in with a history of fatty, smelly diarrhea after hiking or camping. So this is Giardia, and they're going to mention somebody that was outdoors and then now develops a foul, sm foul smelling, fatty stools. All right, so look out for Giardia. The next patient's going to come in with right upper quadrant plane, bloody diarrhea, liver abscess, and flask shaped ulcers. So this is Entamoeba histolytica, and for this one, they can show you an image of pathogens that engulf the red blood cells, and the cyst can have multiple nuclei. The next patient is going to be an AIDS patient that gets watery diarrhea, and the pathogen is acid fast staining. This is Cryptosporidium. The next patient History of cat feces or undercooked meat ingestion. An AIDS patient can get multiple ring enhancing lesions in the brain. And a mother who is infected can have a baby that has intracranial calcifications in the brain. So this is toxoplasma. So look out for the multiple ring enhancing lesions in an AIDS patient or a baby with intracranial calcifications. The next patient's gonna die after swimming and this pathogen gets into the cribiform plate. So this is Nigleria fowleri, and they might mention a history of someone having abnormal smell because a pathogen gets into the cribiform plate, and it's a rapidly fatal infection. The next patient's going to have an infection transmitted by the set C fly. They're going to be febrile, sleepy, and we see trypomastigotes in the blood smear. So this is T. brucei, and this is known as African sleeping sickness, okay? So they get very sleepy. The next patient has a history of travel outside of the U.S., a fever that comes and goes, anemia, ring form in red blood cells, and hypnozoites in the liver. So this is going to be Plasmodium vivax and ovale. So this is a malaria infection specifically by these two subtypes of malaria. And now notice I mentioned hypnozoites in the liver. So P vivax and ovale can actually form this latent um, infection in your liver. So that's why it's really essential to treat them with chloroquine and primaquine to prevent recurrence. The next patient is going to have no travel outside of the U.S., but very similar symptoms to the last vignette, like a fever and anemia. But this time we see tetrads or a cross form in the red blood cells. So this is Babesia. And some big clues, because the symptoms are so similar for Babesia and malaria, are the travel history. And also, remember, malaria is spread by mosquitoes and Babesia is due to tick bites. Okay, so look out for that. The next patient's going to have a travel history to South America, a big heart, a big colon, a big esophagus, and swollen eyes. And then a trypomastigoat is seen in blood smear. Okay, so this is going to be T. cruzi, and this causes Chagas disease. Okay, so look out for the mega colon, mega esophagus, and uh, dilated heart. Okay, and then the swollen eyes are called Romana sign. So look out for those um, clue symptoms. The next patient is going to have an infection transmitted by sand fly. It can cause organ or skin lesions, and then we see amastigotes in macrophages. So this is going to be leishmania, and a key thing for this is the amastigotes in the macrophages, and it can cause either visceral leishmania or cutaneous leishmania. Okay, so that's why you can get organ or skin lesions. The next patient is going to be a female with green vaginal discharge, Punctate hemorrhages on the cervix, known as a strawberry cervix, and we see motile organisms on wet mount. 
So this is trichomonas, okay? So this causes the green vaginal discharge, and we also see the motile organisms due to the presence of a flagella, okay? And so this causes trichomoniasis. The next patient's going to be a child with an itchy bum, and we see eggs on the tape test. So this is enterobius vermicularis. The next patient can get lung and GI symptoms, and then we see a thick, knobby-coated, oval-shaped egg. So this is Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, so look out for a picture of um, a pathogen that has a very thick coating around the egg, and then you want to look out for lung and GI symptoms like abdominal pain, hemoptysis. And the next one, the patient's going to have lung, GI, and skin symptoms, as well as larvae in the feces. So this is Strongyloides stercoralis, and a key thing for this one is that they're going to mention larvae in the feces. The next patient's going to be walking barefoot at the beach and now develops low hemoglobin, low hematocrit, low MCV, and has an itchy foot, and they might show a picture of a serpiginous rash on the foot. So this is Ancelostoma and Nicator, which is a hookworm infection, and they show this swirly shaped rash on the foot and it's caused by walking barefoot outside and it causes a iron deficiency microcytic anemia which is why i mentioned these lab values here okay the next patient is going to eat undercooked pork and develops muscle pain so this is trichinella and the key thing is eating pork and then it infects the muscles the next patient going to have a black fly bite and blindness. So this is Oncocerca, and this causes river blindness. Look out for the black vision caused by the black fly. The next one is going to have a worm invading the lymph nodes, and we see lymphedema. So this is Wuchereria and Brugia. And sometimes they show a picture of someone with really swollen legs, okay, representing the lymphedema. The next patient's going to eat undercooked pork and now get cysts in the brain and seizures. So this is Tinea solium, okay, and this causes the cysts in the brain known as neurocystosarcosis. The next patient's going to eat raw fish and this causes a B12 deficiency. So this is going to be Diphlobothrium latum. The next patient is going to eat dog feces and then gets eggshell calcifications and cysts in the liver. And anaphylaxis can occur due to rupture of the cysts. So this is Echinococcus, known as the dog tapeworm. The next patient is going to have exposure to water with snails, usually an immigrant, and then develops bloody urine, and it can lead to bladder squamous cell carcinoma, and there's a terminal spine on the egg. So this is schistosoma. The next patient is going to eat raw fish, and this causes gallstones and cholangiocarcinoma. This is clinorchis, and look out for the gallbladder features here. The next patient's going to have itching between the fingers and toes. So this is sarcoptis scabii, okay? So this causes scabies, and they like to mention itching between the fingers, or also known as the finger webs, and the toes. The next patient's going to have an itchy head and body or pubic itching. So this is lice. Okay, caused by pediculus humanus, really itchy head, body, or pubic region. Okay, so it can cause body lice or pubic lice. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Good luck studying, everyone.